Hello, welcome to your next step in making a wax replaced ring. Now, I have here the ring we have from last time. It is marked with a cute little B, but it's for Brian. And it's looking pretty good. Stone measures right. I smooth it down a little bit, something you don't need to do, but I do it sometimes. The thing is, with the next stage of the ring, the best thing to do is to make the proper ring size. As you can see, this hole looks like a ring hole. It's actually pretty small. It only goes up to about a size five on the ring mandrel. Very few people are size five. Now, you need to hollow that out. Now the question is you're gonna ask me is why do you wanna do this first? The big thing is you have to see how deep you need the stone to go. Because all this material up here is gonna make the ring come up to like here. And it also make the ring more expensive. The more material that you have in there, the more gold it uses, the more expensive it is, and the more your client is not gonna be happy with you. Now, one thing that I bought, which is really helpful with this process, is this little bitty thing right here. It goes into the flex shaft, and this tool is a great remover of material. It's a little bit expensive. It costs about $35, $40. I bought it from Rio. If you have any questions what the order number is, I can tell you later. I don't know the number off the top of my head. It tends to clog up a little bit easy, but you can clean it out easy enough using one of your wax tools. And it works really well. I mean, it saves a lot of time. I also bought this set of tools I haven't played with them quite as much, but as you can see, there's a lot of different heads here, and they work well, but they're definitely not as high quality as this one. So I would say it's worth buying this stuff for like the specialty work, but you want to have one really high quality one to help you out. Now, you first have to attach this to the flex shaft. Just right here. Now, the flex shaft is operated by a pedal, which you can't see, which is underneath the desk. I'm pushing, nothing's happened. I haven't turned it on yet. Right now, I don't have the flex shaft on because I'm not ready yet. You get to think safety first. When you're working with this kind of stuff, you always want to wear goggles, and you always want to wear a mask. Now, the problem is the mask has a habit of when you have the goggles and mask on of fogging up. Sometimes I just wear the goggles, sometimes I wear it just with a mask. Depends on what I'm doing. In general, I try to protect my eyes more. For this kind of stuff, I try to wear both because it's just junk goes everywhere. So, I have my mask on. You don't need a super fancy one unless you're pregnant, but this is just fine. And then I get this thing turned on. And now it's turned on. Let's check it. It's sounding pretty good. Now, the ring is a size 7.5. So let's start doing it. Now the key thing here is, you wanna just kinda of keep going evenly around, and you never actually wanna put the flex shaft at full speed. The only time a flex shaft is actually put at full speed is when you're doing cleaning, when you're polishing. That's the only time. So let's take a look. It's looking pretty good. Let's see how it fits on the flex shaft. Also gives a chance for your goggles to unmask. I mean unfog. See how far it's going up? It's still only about to be five. We haven't removed that much material yet. Up on one side. So we've been removing a lot more on this side. Let's work on this side a little bit. We're going up to almost five and a half. Now the big reason why I'm working over this little plate here is to save up on cleanup later. It has nothing to do with safety. I just make sure I can put most of the stuff there. As I keep working, I always keep checking. Now we're up to almost, almost up to a full six on both sides. I'll keep doing this for the next 15, 20 minutes or so, and then it'll be done. 
And that concludes this next video.